Welcome to Global Report, your trusted source for breaking headlines, global insights, and sharp analysis from around the world. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. For more than 30 years, the Royal Canadian Air Force has been on a determined quest to find a modern replacement for its aging fleet of CF-18 Hornets. These jets have been the backbone of Canada's air defense, playing a crucial role not only in protecting Canadian airspace, but also in fulfilling the country's commitments to NATO and NORAD. As the world changes and new threats emerge, the need for advanced fighter jets has become even more urgent, especially given Canada's vast, and often harsh, northern territories, where quick response and reliability are essential. The search for a new fighter jet has been anything but straightforward. Over the years, the process has been repeatedly disrupted by political reversals, heated debates over ballooning costs, and the complex challenge of finding an aircraft capable of operating effectively across Canada's immense and frigid Arctic regions. Each new government has brought its own priorities and perspectives, leading to shifting requirements and frequent delays. The stakes are high, as the decision will shape Canada's defense capabilities for decades to come. In 2010, after years of study, Canada initially selected the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II, a cutting-edge stealth fighter, as its next-generation jet. However, concerns quickly arose about the program's soaring costs, questions about transparency in the selection process, and whether the F-35 was truly the best fit for Canada's unique needs. These issues forced the government to launch a new competition, inviting other manufacturers to submit their proposals. After another lengthy review, the F-35 was once again chosen in 2021, with a plan to acquire 88 jets. But the story didn't end there. By 2025, a newly elected government decided to dramatically scale back the F-35 order, reducing it to just 16 jets. The reasons were complex. The high price tag, concerns about limited industrial benefits for Canadian companies, and ongoing trade tensions with the United States all played a role. This unexpected move sent shockwaves through the defense community and reignited the debate over what kind of fighter jet Canada truly needs. With the F-35 order slashed, the competition was thrown wide open once again. This time, attention turned to alternatives like Sweden's Saab Gripen E, a modern and versatile fighter known for its lower operating costs and strong performance in cold climates. The Gripen E quickly gained support among some military leaders and defense analysts, who argued it could offer a better balance of capability, affordability, and industrial benefits for Canada. As the debate continues, a new idea has emerged. Instead of relying on a single type of fighter jet, Canada could adopt a mixed fleet approach. This would mean operating different jets for different missions, allowing the Air Force to tailor its capabilities to a wide range of scenarios, from Arctic patrols to international deployments. While this strategy could offer greater flexibility, it also raises questions about cost, logistics, and training. Now, as Canada stands at a crossroads, the decision it makes will shape the future of its air defense for generations. The choice is not just about hardware, but about national security, sovereignty, and the country's role on the world stage. The world is watching to see how Canada will rise to meet this pivotal challenge. With the F-35 deal under review, the Saab Gripen E has re-emerged as a strong alternative. Saab invited Canadian pilots to fly the Gripen, letting them experience its performance firsthand. The Gripen E, a 4.5 generation fighter, blends advanced tech and agility without the high costs and complexity of stealth platforms. Saab's proposal includes assembling the jets in Canada, offering full technology transfer and unprecedented control over the fleet. With potential orders from Ukraine and a Canadian assembly line, the Gripen E is back at the center of Canada's fighter jet debate. Canadian pilots who had the opportunity to test the Gripen E came away deeply impressed by its carefree maneuvering and remarkable agility. Many described the experience as a significant step forward compared to what they were used to, highlighting how the jet responded instantly to their inputs, almost as if it anticipated their intentions. The pilots noted that the Gripen E felt nimble and light in the air, making it easy to handle even during complex maneuvers or high-stress situations. In direct comparison, they found the Gripen E to be noticeably lighter and more responsive than the CF-18, which has been the backbone of Canadian air defense for decades. The difference was clear both on the ground and in the air, with pilots remarking on the Gripen's ability to change direction rapidly and maintain control at all times. 
The advanced flight control system in the Gripen E is a game changer, allowing pilots to push the jet to its absolute limits with confidence and safety. This system automatically manages the aircraft's stability, so pilots can focus on the mission rather than worrying about exceeding safe flight parameters. It's a level of support that gives pilots the freedom to fly more aggressively when needed. The cockpit itself is a leap into the future. Its intuitive widescreen display fuses sensor data from multiple sources, giving pilots a single, clear picture of the battle space. This fusion of information means pilots can make faster, better informed decisions, dramatically improving their situational awareness and reaction time in combat. One of the most appreciated features was the simplified pre-flight and in-flight procedures. Pilots pointed out that the Grip and Ease checklist is just 10 pages long, a stark contrast to the CF-18's 100-plus pages. This is made possible by the jet's advanced automation, which streamlines routine tasks and reduces the risk of human error allowing pilots to focus on flying and fighting. The hands-on throttle and stick or HOTAS controls are another standout. These allow pilots to manage all critical flight and combat functions without ever taking their hands off the controls or their eyes off the sky. This design not only improves safety, but also enhances the pilot's ability to react quickly in dynamic situations. Thanks to the Gripen's user-friendly design, pilots experience a reduced workload, which means they can concentrate more on the mission and less on managing the aircraft. This directly translates to greater combat effectiveness and less fatigue during long or complex sorties. For Canadian pilots, transitioning from the CF-18 to the Gripen E would not only be straightforward, but it would also represent a massive leap in capability. Training process is designed to be smooth, and the similarities in basic operation mean pilots can adapt quickly while benefiting from the Gripen's advanced features. Ultimately, the feedback from Canadian pilots confirms that the Gripen E is far more than just a capable aircraft on paper. In the air, it proves itself as a formidable modern fighter, one that inspires confidence and excitement in those who fly it, and promises to elevate Canada's air power to a whole new level. Upgrading from the CF-18 to the Gripen E is like moving from a rotary phone to a smartphone. The Gripen's digital systems, advanced radar and sensor fusion give pilots unmatched situational awareness, its superior thrust-to-weight ratio and agility outclass the aging Hornet. Maintenance is streamlined, Gripen's can be refueled and rearmed in under 10 minutes by a small crew, compared to over an hour for the CF-18. This rapid turnaround means fewer jets can cover more ground, Crucial for Canada's vast territory, the intuitive systems reduce pilot workload, letting them focus on the mission. For the RCAF, the Gripen E isn't just an upgrade, it's a complete transformation. The F-35 and Gripen E represent two very different philosophies in modern fighter design, each shaped by the unique needs and priorities of their respective nations. These jets are more than just machines, they embody contrasting visions for the future of air combat and national defense. The F-35 is a stealthy, fifth-generation jet, designed for maximum survivability in contested airspace. It boasts cutting-edge sensors, advanced networking, and the ability to evade enemy radar. However, these advantages come at a price. The F-35 is one of the most expensive fighters ever built, both to acquire and to maintain, requiring a vast support infrastructure and highly trained personnel. In contrast, the Gripen E is built around the principles of agility, adaptability, and cost-effectiveness. Its design emphasizes rapid turnaround, ease of maintenance, and the ability to operate from remote or improvised airstrips, the Gripen E's advanced electronic warfare suite and data links make it a formidable opponent, even without stealth. The F-35's operational costs are over three times higher per flight hour than the Gripen's, making it a significant long-term investment. This cost difference impacts not only the number of jets a country can afford, but also the resources available for training, upgrades, and daily operations. The Gripen's rugged design and high readiness rate make it especially well-suited for Canada's vast and often harsh geography. Its ability to operate from dispersed bases, including those in the Arctic, gives Canada flexibility and resilience in defending its territory. While the F-35 scored higher in stealth-focused evaluations, many experts and Gripen supporters argue that factors like affordability, reliability, and national sovereignty deserve greater weight. 
The Gripen's open architecture allows for more Canadian input and control, reducing dependence on foreign suppliers and software. The choice is strategic. Invest in a smaller, highly advanced but costly stealth fleet, or opt for a larger, more independent and affordable force that can be deployed flexibly across Canada's vast territory. This decision will define the Royal Canadian Air Force's future capabilities, shaping how Canada projects power, defends its sovereignty, and supports its allies for decades to come. Ultimately, Canada must weigh the benefits of deep integration with NATO and allied forces against the advantages of operational independence, cost-effectiveness, and the ability to tailor its air force to uniquely Canadian needs. Defending Canada's Arctic demands a jet built for harsh conditions and rapid response, qualities at the heart of the Gripen E's design, its systems are hardened for extreme cold, and its landing gear handles rough improvised strips. The Gripen can be refueled and rearmed by a small team in under 10 minutes, enabling dispersed operations from remote locations. This flexibility allows the RCAF to project power unpredictably across the Arctic, complicating adversary targeting. The Gripen's advanced radar and IRST excel at tracking threats over vast, featureless terrain without revealing its position. These features make the Gripen E almost purpose-built for Canada's northern defense. For NORAD missions, its rapid launch capability could be the difference between a successful intercept and a missed opportunity. Saab's proposal goes beyond selling jets. It offers Canada full technology transfer and control over its fleet. Unlike the F-35, where the U.S. controls critical software and upgrades, the Gripen would be assembled in Canada, creating thousands of high-skilled jobs. New aerospace centers in Montreal would foster innovation and ensure long-term industry growth. The Gripen deal guarantees direct reinvestment in Canada's economy, building a domestic supply chain. This industrial partnership promises true sovereignty and adaptability for the RCAF. Canadian industry would control the jet systems, allowing for future upgrades and integration of Canadian technologies. The Gripen E offers both economic and strategic independence. Ukraine's interest in over 100 Gripen E-fighters has major implications for Saab and Canada. To meet demand, Saab proposes expanding production with Bombardier in Canada, strengthening both countries' aerospace sectors. Ukrainian pilots praise the Gripen's ruggedness and low maintenance, qualities vital for both Ukraine and Canada. This partnership aligns Canada and Sweden strategically, supporting Ukraine while boosting Canadian industry. However, the U.S. warns that a mixed fleet could raise costs and create interoperability challenges within NORAD and NATO. Canada must balance alliance pressures with the benefits of a Swedish-Canadian partnership. Canadian pilots' glowing reviews have put the Gripen E at the center of the debate. Their first-hand accounts highlight the jet's agility, intuitive cockpit, and leap in technology over the CF-18. The Gripen E promises operational independence, industrial growth, and Arctic readiness at lower cost. The decision is now between the F-35's stealth and allied integration, or the Gripen's affordability, sovereignty, and pilot endorsement. This choice will shape Canada's defense and aerospace future for decades. The pilots' voices add a crucial human element to the debate, whatever the outcome, the Gripen E has ensured this is one of the most consequential decisions in Canadian military history.